This video is for all the trainers and coaches out there who want to learn how to support their client's hormone health, but don't exactly know where to start and have been relying on archaic forms of information to help our female clients get to their goals. If you don't know me yet, my name is Omega. I am an exercise scientist, menstrual cycle educator, and founder of one of the first certifications of menstrual cycle health, fitness, and nutrition so that coaches can know how to optimize and balance their clients' hormones while getting them to their goals, baby. And if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please do using the red subscribe button below. And if you are excited for this information, like this video. Before we dive in, I have to tell you too that I have a free webinar out that is all about my method of assessing, addressing, and correcting and optimizing hormones so that your clients and you can have that long-term hormonal health success that is in alignment with their fitness and health goals as well. So get that free masterclass by using the link in the description below. So this is the first way calorie deficits impact our hormone health. And I want you to really, this to really sink in that hormone health starts in the brain. So gonadotropin hormone, kiss peptin, that's all created in the brain. And then that sends signals down to the ovaries to start maturing follicles, which will become eggs, which lead to a healthy ovulation and a healthy luteal phase and for good fertility in general. So this 2020 research article by Navarro and colleagues showed us that when we restrict calories, we also restrict kiss peptin in the brain. And kiss peptin, like I just kind of gave away, regulates gonadotropin hormone and luteinizing hormone, which, like I just said, is the first step for ovulation to occur. And so anytime we are reducing fertility, we're also reducing overall female health. Um, estrogen is very important for bone density, bone mass, muscle recovery, as well as mood regulation. And if we don't have enough estrogen and we're not maturing that follicle, then we're not going to have enough progesterone and progesterone has a rest and relax response on the brain. And that's why when hormones out of whack, we feel out of whack. I have been there. It's a fact. Step two, when we are in calorie deficits, we actually reduce T3. So that's one of our thyroid hormones. And this research article by Fontana and colleagues showed that T3, I don't, I, I don't know if I need to say this, but T3 regulates metabolic rate, heart and digestive functions, muscle control, brain development and function, and the maintenance of bones. Metabolic rate is up there for your client's goals. So if we're doing caloric, de caloric, 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 if we're doing caloric deficits and we have this intention to help them lose weight, we're actually working opposite of that because we are reducing T3, which is important for metabolic rate. Okay. If you're with me, go ahead and like this video and let me know. And remember when you like this video, it helps this video reach more people, which will just help other people be aware of hormone health strategies that interplay with fitness. Okay, I just talked about reducing metabolism, but let's talk about the markers that have shown that metabolism is decreased when we are in a caloric deficit. We have total daily energy expenditure that is reduced. So walking around in the world, we have less energy being expended because our body is in a starvation mode. We have exercise activity thermogenesis that is also being reduced. So we get less bang for our buck when it comes to exercise. And so the caloric deficit should come from exercise. It should not come from caloric restriction. We have a reduction in non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So that is neat. And we all know that neat exercise, like getting our steps in every day is so important and can just work as a cherry on top in terms of helping our clients get to our goals. Well, that cherry on top is taken away and you're left with a pile of mushy, warm ice cream underneath if you are in a calorie deficit. And then we have the thermic effect of food, which is impacted as well. And so when we eat, we our body heats up and it burns calories just to metabolize that food. Well, that is also taken away when we're in a caloric deficit as well. So, so far we have kiss peptin being affected and that impacts ovulation and estrogen production and 
progesterone production. We also have T3 being reduced, and we also have all these metabolic markers for success being reduced as well. And number four, and not surprisingly, we increase, we, increase, we increase the number of fat cells that we have, and this is true for men and women. This is called adipocyte hyperplasia, and this is why so many people believe that they have damaged their metabolism from dieting and don't think they can eat more than 1,200 calories a day. It's because they have increased their number of fat cells, and little do they know that if they increase their calories and increase resistance training, they're going to turn the tables. And you as a coach already know that. So if you got something out of this video, make sure to like it, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and absolutely watch this free masterclass that I have that will teach you how to assess, address, and correct and optimize your client's hormones so that your clients and you can make greater success in every area of your life. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.